Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Bone Snatcher. Released in the year 2003, the movie opens up in the Namib Desert, where a group of geologists, Clive, Paul, and Harvey, are working for a research company. Suddenly, they find some unusual readings in their devices and decide to inspect the location. On the way, they encounter some unearthly items, which creeps them out. After reaching the location, they're surprised to find a large egg-shaped rock in the middle of the desert. Paul decides to take a sample of the rock for further study and approaches it with his pickaxe. He strikes the rock hard, but surprisingly the surface is so soft that it breaks, creating a hole. As he tries to take a closer look inside the hole, a strange creature suddenly pulls him inside. The scene then shifts to Vancouver, where a system analyst named Zack gets a warning for a system failure in the Antarctic module. The team inside the system is asking for help, and with time running out, Zack somehow manages to override the faulty system and stabilizes the condition, saving the whole crew. His boss gets impressed by his work and hands him another project. In the following scene, a taxi drops Zack in the middle of the Namab Desert. Later, a police officer approaches him and takes him to a mining company's base. Zack enters the police camp to clear the security check and meets a female officer named Mickey and an older officer, Johan. Mickey goes through Zack's belongings and is surprised to find a machine inside his bag. Zack explains to her that he's named the machine Charlie, which is mainly designed to find the water location up to 100 feet deep. After completing the security check, Mickey searches for her notebook to enter Zack's name in it. However, the pervert Johan finds it first and inserts it inside his pants. This enrages another officer named Carl, who launches an attack on Johan and knocks him out. After this, Nikki takes the notebook and walks away. In the next scene, Mickey notifies Zack that he's going to the desert with her team, containing officers Magda, Kurt, Titus, and Carl to search for the lost geologists. They load their truck with a huge quantity of fuel, thinking that they may have to wander thousands of kilometers in search of their lost colleagues. After some time driving, Mickey spots the truck of the geologists and asks their driver Magda to take them there. Just then, they discover two dead bodies which Carl recognizes to be of Clive and Paul. They are surprised to find the bodies in a very pitiful condition and also wonder how fast the bodies decomposed as they disappeared only a few hours ago. Mickey suggests they inform the higher authorities, but Carl suspects that Harvey is behind all this, as his body is missing from the place. Just then, Titus calls the group as he has found something. Shortly after, he shows them some strange footprints on the sand. Everyone believes the footprints to be of Harvey and starts following them. Suddenly, Titus stops and tells them that the footprints which were two in the beginning have now become four. At the same time, Zack also gets signals on his machine. Soon, the team reaches the place, where they see the same strange items hanging on sticks. One of the strange items resembles the locket that Titus has. Zack looks around and tries to touch them, but is stopped by Titus, who tells everyone to leave the place immediately. After that, we see the team following the footprints until they find a skull and a body. Kurt and Mickey take a closer look at the body and conclude that it is of Harvey's. However, Carl is still adamant that Harvey is the killer and ignores the dead body. At night, the whole team is sleeping, except Zack, who is still in shock about what he witnessed in the day. To divert his mind, he decides to have some fun and starts sandboarding. Soon, Mickey approaches him and hands him his machine, Charlie, claiming that it's been beeping for a long time, disturbing her sleep. When Zack is taking a closer look at Charlie, Mickey hugs him and the two flirt with each other. After some time, Mickey goes to sleep, despite Zack insisting on staying outside. Just then, Charlie starts to beep loudly, indicating that something is nearby. Zack turns around and suddenly finds a strange creature near him. He gets terrified and immediately runs to wake his crew up. He explains everything he saw to Carl, but the latter does not believe him. Right then, Mickey points out that the dead bodies of their colleagues are missing. Carl suspects that Zack has hidden the bodies, but Zack replies that he's a system analyst and has no work to do with the dead bodies. As they're discussing, Titus tells them about Esikulu, the Sand Mother, who is the first and last creature of her species. He further tells them that Esikulu drinks the life out of the living beings, leaving only bones, and that's how she lives forever. However, Carl does not believe the story and leaves the place. The next day, the team again follows the strange footprints, and this time, they spot the creature afar. Carl takes the rifle from Kurt, locks it on the creature, and shoots it. 
As soon as he shoots, the creature disintegrates into pieces and scatters on the ground. The team rushes to the place but finds nothing there except a pile of bones. Titus then mentions to them that a similar incident happened with him when he was a child. He explains that when he came to the desert with his friend, he got lost and later found his friend's body with only bones remaining. The team then decides to leave the place, but as soon as Magda starts the truck, a short circuit occurs and it catches fire. However, Kurt informs them that it'll take him weeks to repair the truck. Mickey tries to contact the base using a radio, but it also appears to be damaged. The team is left with no other option than to wait for help to arrive there. After two days, Zack starts to panic as he sees an airplane passing by. Magda tries to calm him down, telling him that the people in the airplane have spotted them and will send the rescue team soon. Shortly after, Magda drags out an emergency tent and also distributes the supplies. Kurt collects the bones and puts them inside the storage unit of the truck. Later at night, Kurt approaches Titus and informs him that now it's his turn to guard the place. He then sleeps inside a sleeping bag on the floor. As Titus is keeping an eye on the place, the strange creature approaches Kurt's sleeping bag. Titus also senses someone's presence around and decides to wake up Kurt. When Titus turns Kurt's body, he's shocked to find him turning into a skeleton with the strange creature all over his body. Titus calls out for Carl and he arrives there with a gun. In the meantime, the creature has also managed to hurt Titus. When Carl shoots at Kurt, the creature starts moving towards the team in the form of black ants. Carl and Magda shoot at the creature, but it is unaffected. Soon, they take Titus inside the truck and begin his treatment, while Carl grabs a gallon of fuel and starts spraying it on the ground to stop the creature. He also tries to set fire around the truck, but Magda stops him, telling him that they're carrying a large amount of fuel and if it catches fire, everyone will die. Luckily, the group discovers that the creature is repelled by gasoline. While Zack is spraying some more of it around the truck, Carl yells at him to get out of his way, pointing a gun towards him. In fact, Carl is pointing towards the creature, Asikulu, which is standing right behind Zack. Carl takes a shot at the creature and causes it to disintegrate. Unfortunately, the creature comes back to shape and walks away. When Carl again tries to shoot the creature, he's stopped by Zack, who thinks that it can make the creature angry. The two get into a fight and Mickey is forced to intervene. She also tells them that they should stay together if they want to get out of the place alive. Soon, they gather around and make a plan to go on foot to the nearby base, which is about 40 kilometers away, while Magda stays behind to look after Titus. The next day, Mickey, Zack, and Carl set out on their journey to the base, but soon get trapped in the approaching sandstorm. After the sandstorm clears, they come out of the sand and search for their belongings. Sadly, Charlie is completely destroyed and the gallon of fuel they brought is almost empty. Later at night, they decide to rest around a dead tree, holding each other's hands. Before resting, Zack pours some gasoline around them in hopes of keeping Esikulu away. After some time, Carl turns his flashlight on to take a look around and spots Esikulu approaching them. When the creature lifts its head, they're shocked to see it wearing Magda's face, indicating that Magda and Titus are already dead. Esikulu tries to attack them but cannot go past the gasoline circle. The following day, the team wakes up to a noise coming out of a radio. Carl informs the others that the noise is coming from the nearby truck, which is of the geologists. They approach the truck and also spot the egg-like rock which was forcefully broken by Paul at the beginning of the movie. Zack and the team enter through the opening and after analyzing the place, Zack informs them that it's Esikulu's home, which is developed from prehistoric ants. He also explains that the ants take the support of human bones to appear as a humanoid and attack the living creatures. Suddenly, Johan arrives there and asks the team to come out of the place. He thinks that the team has murdered other members, including the geologists, in the greed of diamonds. Zack tries to explain the whole incident, but Johan is in no mood to listen to him. He believes that they have the diamonds and arrest them at gunpoint. While Johan is taking them to the camp, Carl attacks Johan from behind and manages to get out of custody. Later, we're shown that they have handcuffed the unconscious Johan and are planning to eliminate the strange creature. Zack mentions that Esikulu is trying to build her own colony and later they all conclude that the best place to build a colony would be in the old mine. Before leaving, Carl discovers a liquid explosive inside Johan's truck and decides to take it with him. In the next scene, the team arrives at the old mine and starts looking around for the creature. Shortly after, Carl spots Esakulu, and despite Zack and Mickey's warnings, he moves towards it alone. 
Unfortunately, Esakulu drops a metal bar on Carl's leg, making him unable to walk. When Esakulu is about to eliminate Carl, Zack fires his gun, distracting Esakulu away from Carl. The beast then chases after Zack, but he manages to throw it inside a deep hole. Following this, Carl comes near Zack and thanks him for saving his life and eliminating the creature. Suddenly, Esakulu grabs Carl's leg and starts pulling him inside the hole. Zack and Mickey try to hold on to Carl, but he takes out the liquid explosive and sacrifices himself by jumping inside with the creature. Because of the explosion, the whole place starts shaking profusely. Soon, the duo spot a cocoon and conclude that it's the brain of Esakulu. The ants also resurface, and as they're about to attack, Zack stabs the cocoon with a knife and kills Esakulu. With the creature dead, the mine starts to collapse, but the duo somehow makes it out alive. Outside, they're shocked to find the body of Johan turned into bones. In the next scene, Zack bids farewell to Mickey as she gets in a taxi to move away from the place. The movie ends as we get a close-up shot of Mickey's luggage, which reveals that the cocoon is still inside it. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.